What is good? Not Casey. No, I'm just kidding. He's good. He's out having a baby, hopefully. Be a healthy baby girl. Shout out to him. We got a bipod in the house. Big D, how you doing, buddy? Good to have you on. Good to see you. Good, buddy. Did that crack? Pouring it out? Getting ready. We got Here's some yours. We got some faves today. We got some my guys. My guys. My guys. Man, if I could just not sing, that would be good. <laughs> I almost backed you up there. I was like, we shouldn't, we shouldn't. This is yeah, I'm a terrible <laughs> singer <laughs> too. I know better. I just <laughs> can't help myself because I love to sing. So we've, uh, you know, we're kind of in a dull period here. We're waiting for the games to start. The third week of the preseason is done. We're waiting for next Thursday. Can we get next Thursday to come around so we can watch some real football? So um, we're just sitting here thinking, like, let's go ahead and recap kind of the year. We've been giving you guys all off season long, and uh, we'll just go through some list of guys that that I couldn't basically, you know, I can't stop, I can't stop drafting. I look, went back through all these mocks that we've done and looking at some of my teams and just guys that I that I got to have will lead off with a player that you're not going to like. And I got I got to say you're probably not going to like any of the players on this list. All I see is hate on these guys for the most part whether you're on Twitter or whatnot. Uh, the narrative seems to be down, and I just I can't help myself regardless. So, first guy, Deshaun Watson. Nobody wants to hear that. Uh, a lot of, lot of hate towards Deshaun. Um, I, I understand, you know, plenty of reasons to not like Deshaun, but we're not talking about hanging out with a guy. We're talking about scoring fantasy points, and I think he's going to do a lot of that. The last full season he had, over 4,800 yards, 33 touchdowns, seven interceptions, another 400 yards on the ground. He's He's got a ceiling of about 500 yards. He's topped that once. He's definitely getting you 400. Four to seven rushing touchdowns on top of that. And now you look at him on the Browns. Probably the best offensive line he's ever played behind. They're, they're number two in the preseason rankings for PFF overall. He's got weapons everywhere. Everywhere you look. Insert Nick Chubb. And this Browns offense is about to be scary. And I'm excited to watch. Uh, I think... What you saw from him in the preseason is the willingness to take off. You saw him getting yards on the ground with his legs. Uh, you saw design runs plays called for him in the red zone. And this is just preseason, you know, and no Nick yeah. Chubb. And so I'm, I'm excited. I, 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 I want to watch the Browns play. He's still fairly young at 27 years old. Uh, if you look at the ADP, where is he at? Like 110, 112? Mm -hmm. 112 in our uh, offseason ADP QB9. All day, all day I'll take that uh, at the turn right there. If I can get Deshaun, if I have one of those last picks, I'll take Deshaun. If I'm up earlier and I can get a Justin Fields and double down with Deshaun, that's how I like to do it. I don't want to force the two QB thing, but if I can get two like that, I'm down. Uh, so I, I, full disclosure, I did go to Clemson. So I have a little bit of bias. I'm not going to lie. Just, just a tad, just, just a little bit. But, I mean, I just... The guy's going to score fantasy points, and he's a discount right now. If he has a season like he's capable of, he's he's not going to be available at the end of the first round next year. So I get no. that you're kind of drafting him at his peak. I don't know how much higher. He can go a little bit higher, but it's okay to draft players at their peak if they're going to be good and score points. So I know I don't think you're the biggest fan of Deshaun, right? Would You you got some rebuttals for me there, Big D? How are you feeling? I, I mean, I don't have any major rebuttals I, I think um where he's going is a little a little rich for me but I, I completely understand the narrative i understand his uh his weapons you know the offense that's there you talked about the preseason the way that they're they you know again it's preseason they're not going to put out any major schemes or anything but the fact that he's already kind of running and and i think we saw that towards the end of last year when he started to score a little bit and get in rhythm i you know he's a, a rhythm quarterback for me and i i i believe man i, I think that he he has an amazing floor, right? Because mm -hmm. of all those weapons. And then like you're saying, his ceiling is is top five. I mean, it's it has to be with the with the weapons that are around him and, right. and what he's done in the past, you know, um past is in fan fantasy points, uh, when he was in Houston. So. And and there's been a lot of negative talk on Twitter and, and just mm -hmm. mostly on Twitter, I guess. And, and you even no, but even talk radio, I, all I hear is the big heads, you know, they're mad at him and and, and he's been fumbling the ball in in practice and throwing picks to the same guy and they they didn't score in the preseason drive they had but like what i saw was them meticulously moving the ball down the field 
and him taking off and getting first downs when he needed it. And, and, and there's just mad upside there, and you can see it. And so my guy, number one, Deshaun Watson, let's go. Who you got, uh, Big D? Kick it to you. We'll go to, we're going to go with Daniel Jones, I think, is our, our – uh, got to right if you've been listening to this show you know big d was going daniel jones <laughs> you know you knew it was one of two players yep. we're gonna go daniel jones first um you know daniel jones uh, he is uh here, here we go jay we want to we want to throw the hate on him he's jalen hurts without the without the wide receiver talent um he's jalen hurts without the the butt uh butt push and what do i mean by that <laughs> is if you go back and you look at um or the tush push. Sorry, that's that's what that's what the big conglomerates call. Um, okay, yeah. The first uh, thing you said had a little uh, Mark Sanchezy vibe to it. So uh. yeah, yeah, not not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the tush push is that uh, you know the Philadelphia special. Um, yeah, the, which they did not world. outlaw this off season. So we're okay. going to see more of that. We're going to see it. Yeah, but but if you look at it, I mean, his touchdown rate um, is what's off, and you can say that. Um, if I named the top wide receivers that Daniel Jones was thrown to last year, I mean, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to because uh, I don't need to. I, everybody knows that he didn't have any talent. He, he didn't have a lot of talent that was healthy most of the year. And then you, so right now he's projected to score the same amount of points that he did last year, but they've added Waller. They've added to that wide receiver room. It's another, um, you know, another off season under uh, Debo. I mean, I don't understand how people are saying he's going to score probably about the same, maybe a little bit less is what the projections are at. When you're adding the talent in, you're adding, you know, you're adding a, an, a perennial um, tight end that is just going to gobble up points. I mean, for me, it's just it's a no brainer that Daniel Jones and, and I think um, I, you just had the ADP up there. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the ADP is is, you know, I, I don't know what it currently is. He, he kind of goes up and down. But you've been but, driving this. It's four four. So that's yeah. not terrible. I think you probably get more of a discount on Daniel Jones and especially mm-hmm. in one QB leagues or oh, your yeah, one QB redraft leagues. Like when I go into my redraft drafts. I'm going to be looking at Daniel Jones because I don't want to spend a high pick on him and he's going to be available. And like I had a buddy text me. He's like, Hey, I need some of your infinite fantasy knowledge. I got a super flex. He's in a super flex redraft league. He's like, I got the seventh pick. What should I do? I was like, take a quarterback unless six straight go. But even then it's probably take a quarterback. And then he's like, who are some later round quarterbacks that I can get that people aren't on? And I was like, I mean, Daniel Jones, Goff, Geno Smith, and then a little later, Ryan Tannehill. Like, those would be the guys. And he's like, awesome. Like I'm, And, and that's, yeah. like, probably the order. Those guys are all going to score mad amounts of points. You know, Tannehill should be okay, and you don't have to pay anywhere near for him those other no. three guys. But those are, like, the middle-round quarterbacks that you don't have to force. You know, if you can't get a Deshaun or you can't get, like, a Kyler Murray, obviously not in redraft, but, like, in Dynasty, if you can't do that early, those guys are, are pretty good stabs. And, and, and Daniel Jones has to be on top of all of them because of his age and the situation he got paid, the team, the coach, you know, everybody loves his coach. And so yeah. I, I don't understand. What was he last year? QB9? I mean, there's... I think he was QB10 overall on um, uh, weeks 1 through 17, which is okay. QB play, right? Yeah. So, like, he was QB10. And I, I just, again, I just don't I don't get it. Um, I don't How get that doesn't on him. at least stay the same. Yeah. If not, it has to go up. Right. And we're talking dynasty, you know, most right. of the time here. And like, 26 I mean, years old. He, he just signed a decent contract to stay around. Like right. there's, <laughs> there's just, to me, the, I, I don't know what his upside is. I don't think he, he'll, he doesn't have uh, the tools to be a number one overall, right? He's not, I don't think he could be a QB one overall unless he just has some crazy uh, asinine touchdown rate. Right. But, but I mean, he does have a, um, he has already shown that he can be in that top, top 10 um talk and i think he has the the ceiling to get into that top five and if you're drafting your top five a top five qb uh, you know uh like at 13th qb off the board i mean give me it all day long you know like it's it's uh i don't know it, it, sometimes we we overthink some things in in dynasty um and in, in, in fantasy football and in life to be honest and and to me it's this one's just a, a real easy slam dunk is is daniel jones should be a target of yours and and if he's not he's probably because he's already on my team right and and if you have him then you know how good he was and if you don't then you don't know then but 
maybe now you do. All right, let's take it to another guy, uh, someone else that, that people don't want to hear about. I got to just mention his name real quick because we've been on him all off season. Just type in Najee Harris, the FF Dynasty on YouTube, and there'll be a slew of videos, and we'll break down all the things that we love about this man and how awesome he is. And we've been talking about him a lot recently. And uh, this just the Steelers' offense is about to be ready to go, and th- they've got an improved offensive line. Pickett's another year in the system. They looked ready to go in the preseason. I know they were going against second and third stringers when they were playing the first team offense, but they just moved it right down the field and slicing them up. Pickens is a stud. Deontay Johnson, I think, bounces back. I'm not trying to take anything away from Jalen Warren. I think he's a good player. We've said that a lot. But Najee Harris is a hoss. And I guarantee, like Casey said it, I think we got into some Najee Harris. We recorded the the rookie mock that just dropped, and I think we I think we threw in some Najee at the very end. I'm not sure how we got onto that. It was a rookie mock, but we can't help ourselves with Najee Harris, and I I can't help myself right now. I just got to bring him back up again because there's just so much hate, and and everyone just wants Jalen Warren to be so good. And I'm not saying that he's not. He's definitely explosive, and he's a good complimentary back, and I think he's going to factor in, but he's not going to take half the work. You know what I mean? And Najee's yeah. going to do work, and he's going to do work in the receiving game and on the goal line, and he's going to be breaking off some big runs. This offensive line looks awesome, looks much improved, and I think it's going to be a fun time watching the Steelers, and, and I'm taking Najee, Najee all over the place. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Where is he in our ADP? Probably a little elevated uh, because, you know, we've been up in there doing like the him. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 410. We like him. Our, our, our pat- uh, Patreons like him. I mean, he's... Right. I think that's you know, properly rated 410 right there. You know, yeah. like, uh, you want to take Eckler because of the one-year, two-year upside, f- sure. You want to take Josh Jacobs because he's probably about to fill that up again. I understand right. it. I think I'd rather have Najee over both those guys. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I, I, another guy I want to talk about that's my guy, Go Tigers, Travis Etienne. I can't help myself. Uh, might as well go on and hit in, in, on him Do it. Uh, for a second. There's an old up. Clemson cast here. Besides uh, I know. Someone, so someone's going to be mad. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna hit me up in the comments. Go for it. Let me know. Uh, but listen, Travis Etienne is a, a souped-up race car with a humble attitude and a strong work ethic. Like, that can't fail. Right. Like right. unless some freak injury like a Liz Frank pops up, which I mean, I don't think he gets enough credit. I, I think people focus too much on the negatives and they don't realize that he showed that he was back from that. And, yeah. you know, he's going to have done nothing but improve in the off season. And you saw that throughout his entire college career. I think the target share comes up. I think the receiving comes up. I think the explosive plays stay kind of on par where they were, which is astronomical. And if you look at the – um if you look at the output here from last year and specifically the snap percentages, like he didn't play but half the snaps the first six games of the season. They were easing him in. And the Jags as a, as a team were figuring out this whole right. this whole season. You saw you see what happens when he when he gets more snaps, these PPR points start shooting up here. Um, and then in week twelve he picks up a foot sprain and that kind of affected a little bit of the rest of the year. Uh, but 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 looking at how many snaps he played, it, it and the points that he put up and, and what he showed you is pretty encouraging. If you if this is too rich for your blood here at this ADP, I understand. I'm not mad if you don't want to take him here. Um, I don't think you necessarily have to. I think he's going to linger around. This ADP is a little flawed in the sense that it's not uh, month to month. It's post draft so we probably i don't know done 15 drafts since yeah. then 15 mocks right so it's kind of and and if, if you if you look at the progression of etn it's definitely gone down as we've gotten further away from the draft as people are i don't know a either coming around on tank bigsby which welcome to the party or b <laughs> right they're remembering how much they hate Travis Etienne. I think it's a little bit of both of that, and I don't think it's fair to my man Et. And uh, I think you know he's still just 24. I traded Rashad White and two eight in a one quarterback rookie draft uh, to get Deshaun, and I was Rashad White in a, in the two eight. You said? I think so. Or yeah. Maybe it was an early two. 
No, I think it was two. It was two eight. And then the guy, the guy had like one twelve and took tank after trading me et. I'm like, man, you have (laughs) really bought into the narrative there. But I, and the more that I look at et on my team, the more excited I am. And I don't think it's just because I'm a tiger. It's because I feel like I'm. I made a good trade there, and I'm excited about having ET on my team. That team's ready to go. He is 24, January birthday, so, you know, not the sp- youngest, spryest ever. He stayed four years in college. I understand. I understand, but he's about to do work, and I, I think he's underrated, and I think people are th- giving Tank probably too much credit, even though I do like Tank. So that's that's yeah. uh, another one of my guys. Who who, who you got, uh, Big D? Well, just real quick on, on ET. I, sure. I, I, I like the pick a lot. I mean, I, I think that, you know, we, we had a discussion discussion earlier in the offseason about him and Ken Walker, you know, Tank and Sharp there, you know, how the similarities that are going on there. I, I think the one thing that gives me pause with Jacksonville is just that they're going to have three new offensive linemen going. So I think from a timing and, and that kind of thing perspective, it could take some time. But Peterson is a genius, in my opinion, just the way he, you know, the way he, he plays or the way he calls. And I, and uh, T Law is uh, Trevor Lawrence is is you know he's he's a smart dude man um, he where'd he go again he's smarter than he looks not nah, uh, you know you know where oh he went. that's right you right, know yeah. where he went yeah I mean he looks like he's from Whoville but I mean the dude is, uh, <laughs> the dude is <laughs> well he'd be <laughs> like he's fourteen years of who if he's <laughs> in Whoville he's massive but yeah he, he, yeah I mean he's he, he point is he. He's pretty. I mean, the scheme between that, even with three rookie, uh, or not rookie, but newer offensive linemen coming in there, I could see there being maybe a little bit of struggle in the first quarter, but I'll tell you right now, that's if there is that struggle, I'm buying. I'm buying ET, I'm buying, I'm buying Jags because I, I think that, you know, um, that it may take a little bit of uh, time to get that chemistry going, but I, 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 everything that you just spouted and the way that you're talking about ET, I, I think there's enough work and there's enough play there for, for both of those um both of those running backs to have yeah. have a great year. I could yeah. see them both being in the top twenty. So Ah, that's that might be a little aggressive. I think that'd be a spectacular year for the Jags if both of those guys were top twenty. I think I think we, me and Casey had the argu- had the discussion. I think on the rookie mock where he, you know he was like, I think Take will have some standalone value, and I was like, well, I don't want to depend on that. I like where he is, yeah. and if something were to happen to Et, sure. I think it's great. I think it's great for the team. I don't think Et needs a hundred percent of the snaps or seventy five percent. He doesn't even he doesn't need that. He's super yeah. efficient. He can be good without that. No running back gets all that. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is in this day and age. But yeah. people were so quick to tank on him, even just coming out of college. And then he hurt yeah. his foot. And then essentially in his rookie year last year, and to me showed enough and a lot to, to warrant um, yeah. still being excited about him. So Yeah, well, maybe top 30. I, I, I think that Ken, and, uh, Ken Walker and Charbonnet can, can hit that top 20 because of the scheme i don't know how jacksonville is going to use those two and right. so yeah so maybe top 30 um they got calvin and christian and zay yeah. and evan ingram and yeah so they got a lot they got, they cooking got a good, over there good 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 talent pool there but so my my guy my my next guy this should obviously uh, this is this is obvious this is a, gee this is a let me one. think yeah it's not hard miles sanders uh he's got uh, already uh, questionable uh, huh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It gives me another buying opportunity nice um, nice I, I, I did hear i wasn't on a uh, live stream i heard casey kind of talk about he's a little concerned about the panthers and their offensive line i i'm not too concerned about it quite yet um i think that there's some new schemes and new assignments with uh, right there um their left tackle icky has is really working i think on pass protection more than than run blocking and um and I know that uh, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Um, I think it's their right guard is currently out. Um, he's 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 doing some rehab. He's not at all all pro or anything, but he's a decent decent guard to have in there. But the point being is, I, I think that um, you know they played the Giants, they played the Jets, they had some they had some struggles in the preseason. But again, it's the preseason. I, I'm not too concerned about Sanders' injury. And um, and it's all about expectation. You know, when we talk about my guys, I'm not saying Miles Sanders is going to be an RB, you know, the RB top five, you know, like that's that's not what I where I'm drafting him, And that's not what I'm drafting him for. But, you know, if he can hit that um, late, uh, you know, 12 through 16 range, I'm happy with it. And his current ADP is um, 704 RB 19. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think he can outperform that easily. Uh, and again, this is dynasty that we're talking about. Um, he he 
He's one of the few 26 year olds that have signed a contract. So he's going to be there mm. this year. He's going to be there next year. And he's probably going to be there on that third, uh, on the third year of the contract. They may have to do some restructuring, but point being that offense is going to get better. You know, Bryce Young is going to, uh, we'll, we'll see. I, 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 I'm, I'm optimistic with, with Young, but I, I can guarantee that he's going to get better as the season goes on. The more, the, the more he sees, the more he plays and that offensive line, like I say, as they heal up, I, I think that Sanders is, um, I, I wouldn't say he's a slam dunk like Daniel Jones. He, he's definitely one guy that I really, really enjoy. And I can understand the hate that's coming on Sanders or, or maybe not even the hate, just some of the, like, let's take our foot off the gas a little bit with them. But, but when I look at that offense and I look at the names that are on that offense, I, I just I, I gravitate towards Sanders as a playmaker, and I just think he's going to be um, drastically involved in, in scoring some points. So, Yeah, I can't argue with it. My uh, distaste for Miles Sanders is completely personal and uh, week-to-week specific on when I started him and when I bought yeah. in and, and when he let me down, and you know what I mean? And I, But I can't argue against any of that, and – he, you know, he is 26, so you're not trying to mess with him if you're not trying to win, which Big D's always trying to win. Uh, that's oh. I know a lot of you people out there aren't really trying to win. Uh, I saw a tweet today that was like a lot of people in first year dynasties already rebuilding, like a lot. Like why? And I'm like, I know. Like I'm in a league right now where I'm like, I'm trying to rebuild because I don't think I'm quite there. Although look, I did. I looked at the landscape and it's it's pretty evenly spread. In terms of, of talent, but like every time I try and make a trade, like everyone's team's bad and they're all rebuilding. They don't want to make the trades I want to make. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. it's like, okay, all right, all right, I get it. Maybe I should pivot then. Maybe I should go buy Nick Chubb, you know, and just say, fuck yeah. it, let's see what happens. Because uh, I did just get Bijan because I won the I won the one one and got Bijan, go. and so adding him to like, I got Josh it Allen, <laughs> right? I got Josh Allen. I got uh, I got C D Lamb. I got Keenan Allen. Jeez. Kamara Swift. What? And you're not wait, you're you're deciding if you're gonna rebuild or not? Well, I mean, I, I got Tyler Lockett, but I mean Tyler Lockett's old and Swift sure. could easily fall off mm-hmm. you know at any point. Kamara <laughs> I dodged a bullet there. I still mm-hmm. can maybe sell him. You know, Keenan's super old. I probably need to move on from him and Tyler if I can figure out a, a good week to do that. Um but you know, if they all stayed healthy, then I I could really. But but it's you got to start a lot of people, and then I don't have a lot of depth. You know, I don't have a ton sitting behind. I got Traylon, I got Romeo Dobbs. Um, I'm sitting on the clock right now, trying to wait to see if JT will sign with the Dolphins or not. Because uh, I just missed out. It's a tight end premium, and I don't have a great tight end. Uh, I just missed out on Michael Mayer, um, Big Co was really trying to get me to trade i, I would have had to uh, to move up one spot he wanted the four one and i was like ah I, I i'm cool with mayor there's a chain sitting there there's rashi rice there's marvin mims there's mingo spears bigsby i'm like trying to move back i'm not trying to move up i was a little bummed yeah. that michael mayor went off i would have taken him even though i'm not as excited about him i guess you just have to in tight end premium it makes sense just take the swings fine um but now i'm like now nah, i don't know what to do uh because i want to take a chain because i want to put my money where my mouth is because i've been sure. saying how fun he is and how yeah. we're trying to put the fun back in dynasty with yeah. one of the one of those f's is for fun right uh-huh. uh but this team i'm not necessarily trying to have fun with right now you know i need like an asset that i know isn't going to depreciate and if i draft a chain tonight and jt signs tomorrow i just lost a bunch of value um so i almost need to like insulate it and i for some reason i want to take rice um trying to figure out how i can get a 24 first out of this i'm I'm on the clock it's two one one quarterback tight end premium um and i don't know what to do i'm probably about to take rasheed rice i guess if i had to Put, if I have to do it right now, because I feel like he's got his value has nowhere to go but up, right? Yep. Like it's already on the rise, and I'm probably reaching a little bit. I really want to take Tajay Spears, but I'm not going to do that. I should. I, I'm da- I'm down to take a chain. You know, like I really love a chain, and it is a lot of fun. This isn't a cheap league. You know, it, it costs a little yep. bit. It costs some money to get into it, mm-hmm. so that weighs into it. When I'm telling people to have fun, I know you're probably not playing for a ton, so you should be having more fun. Um, yeah. I'm on a I'm I'm on a team that I don't know it could fall off really easily and if and if I made a couple moves to better myself long term and got rid of Keenan and Tyler Lockett and Swift or Kamara, then now I'm really have no chance to win this year and I you know 
maybe the wide receiver is the better appreciating asset for for this team. And and if he pops off one week, I could I could definitely get my twenty four first for him. You right. know, would yeah, you trade this pick? Would you trade this pick for a twenty four first straight up two one in in a one quarterback at that point? Would you? Uh, one quarterback, yeah, yeah, I definitely would. Because I mean, you. <clears throat> You know, it's 24 class is going to be the best class has ever been. Um, yeah. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> every class is. But no, I mean, point is, is that if you're not quite sure, I don't mind pivoting. Um, I, I, I personally like I like the running backs that you mentioned there. I, I think I like them better than the wide receivers. I think the wide receivers have more insulated value. But those one, running backs can pop, you know, one injury to one minor injury to uh, to, to Henry or or, you know, um, I know A-Chain has the shoulder injury going on right now, but it doesn't seem like it's serious. I think they're holding him out. No, of, yeah. I don't think it's serious know. either. I think yeah. he actually got some run after that injury yeah. in the game, which I don't understand. But, like, uh, if JT signs there tomorrow, sure, they're going to extend him. Yeah. That's – gonna be devastating for H. Gonna kill his value. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And mm-hmm. and and I don't have enough. Well, but what if H. Chain goes to the Colts? Oh, like in a trade? Yeah. What if they take H. Chain and say a I don't know a third or a second? I don't know NFL values that well, but you know they they trade H. Chain and um and and a third. Let's well, say that would be awesome. In a second, and yeah. A. T. I mean H. Chain value is insulated, so I, I get what you're saying. There there is a definite. Uh, dramatic uh, uh trap door floor there yeah but, but well the problem is i can't sit on the clock until 4 p.m tomorrow when the roster cuts have to be done so if nothing happens tonight then uh yeah, yeah. so full disclosure recording this on monday night i don't know when i'll get it edited and put out i'm sure jt jt they have to make a decision by tomorrow it has to be worked out tomorrow yeah. i think so but i can't sit on the clock yeah. i can't sit on the clock that long um and i've been trying to work out other deals I almost had almost had a deal for a first and then almost had a deal for a second um Oh, I just had a deal proposed to me. Oh, here we go. What do you Bye. know? It's not a good one though. Oh, never he never makes good that. never makes good trade offers. But, <laughs> um, but that just goes to show you: you sit on the clock for a minute, you might get something sent into your but, way. So, yeah, especially this time of year, bro. It's, right. It's you know things are things are liquid. Things are water, as right. we like to say. Right. You know they're they're moving and and grooving. So, all right. Well, let's do. I want to do a couple more. We'll get we'll get the FF out of here. Uh, I sure. couldn't. I would be remorse if I left the My Guy show without mentioning Zay Flowers. Uh, what a stud! I'm so excited about Zay Flowers. We've been excited all off season long. We haven't. He, he, we've just kept his name in our mouth nonstop. And now, you know, when you get to see him play, and you saw how easy it looked from a man, it was just. I'm just so excited about him. And I want to get him in redraft, and I want to get him in dynasty, whether that's a rookie draft or your startup um, trade form, whatever. I want to go get some Zay Flowers because I'm just super excited about that guy. I gotta. I gotta bring up. Jameson Williams, he's one of our guys. We've been on him for a long time. I'm not quitting him yet. Uh, got to got to play this thing out. See what happens after this stupid suspension. I'm um, pretty excited about that. Uh, trying to get some JMO. I've been trying to get some more JMO. Been sending out feelers to see if if <clears throat> he offered the two one to get Jameson. Got that turned down. Um, uh, I didn't offer a first for him. Um, I offered the two. Would you give up two twos for him? Sure. Yep. We tried it. The guy said the guy said we're not moving Jameson. We waited oh. this long on him and we got to see where we're at. So Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. I was like I, I, and I think smart. That's what a lot, I think that's what a lot of people are going to do. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah, cuz if you yeah. drafted him, you probably liked him. You're not one of the haters that see, see. Yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> Uh, Brandon Ayuk's another guy that I, I always have in my queue and I'm always looking at. Still fairly young, probably going to get a fresh start next year. Uh, good where he's at. Purdy and him had a thing going on. He, you know, I know some of that played in last year. He got a little lucky. Didn't have CMC in the first part of the season and didn't have Debo and uh, part of the season and you know things kind of worked out for him. But I think he's going to get a fresh start. I think he's still pretty cheap and attainable. Really like trying to get some Brandon Ayuk. Uh, Elijah Moore is another one of our guys that we've been on all off season, trying to yep. trying to acquire as much of him as we can. It was really interesting to see how they were using him in the short, sam- small sample size of the preseason, where you saw yeah. him moving all over the place, and it was just like, oh shit, I don't even know where he came from. All of a sudden, he's in space, and that's <laughs> that's what I want. Um, and then some later round guys that I I, I I was just looking through all these mocks that I've done and who I'm, I'm who I'm taking who I'm trying to trade for Darnell Mooney which I saw some rumors today that he might get traded I don't know if that's good or bad for him I don't I kind of liked him with Justin Fields uh, I like the fact that they brought in somebody else so he doesn't have to be the one I thought he's 
He's a worker. He looks all yoked up. I think he's going to have a good season. If he has to get traded and learn a whole new system and uh, right after training camp, I don't know if that's going to bode that well for him. Um, so that, I think that might even be a bummer if he got traded. But, it, you know. I think it depends on where he goes. But, yeah. If I, it's I somewhere good, then you could yeah. flip him right then. That's the best yeah. time to trade a player you're on the yeah. edge about is when they get traded, go ahead and try and flip him because that, that excitement, that brand new like toy. To, to Denver or something with their wide receiver woes or something something to that. Yeah. Effect. You know, he has a quarterback around him that can can – can put up some fantasy points. I think you definitely have the over right. there. So. And he's still young. If you like them a lot, you could hold. But I, I, I don't think it'd be as exciting if he does get traded because it's going to be a, a slower start. Whereas I think he could hit the ground running um, yeah. with the Bears. Yeah, I mean, some of the guys on my side are uh, Jahan Dotson. I, oh um, yeah. No, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm high on Dotson. Um, I have been high on Dotson for a while. I think I traded a first for him last year. Um, I, I just, I like the way that he's ending. I, I like that, um, Eric, Eric, the enemy, uh, is, is there now um, sure. calling plays. Um, Sam Howell, I think is going to let it rip his personality, the way that it seems, it seems like they're, they're getting ready that, that Washington offense is kind of a yeah. sleeper to me, man. They're like yeah. the Detroit lion esque of last year or, or the year before, whenever, whenever it was the, the, the lions popped off, man, I, I, I'm I'm kind of liking Washington's offense and what they're putting out there, and then the in some of the some of the talk and some of the schemes, and you know they're still everybody's still learning that system, and 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 it's and it's looking pretty good. So Dotson is de- definitely high on my radar. Uh, you know there has to be some regression with Dotson though, man. You can't score a touchdown every every yeah. game. You can't yeah. do it, but he just yeah, keeps doing absolutely it. Absolutely impossible. What a beast! He's putting him up, you know. Yeah, what a beast. Um, Sorry, who's your next guy? I cut you off. Christian Kirk is one of those other guys. You know, I know Calvin Ridley has taken all the thunder, but if we love Trevor Lawrence and we like that offense and we think it's going to produce, and we talked about all the weapons, it's like Christian Kirk is, I don't know what he's, um, his ADP is, is, continues to drop you know every time they they put out a ridley video you know but mm-hmm. i mean ridley hasn't played in two years he looks really fast he, he's always looked fast out of his breaks but it, it's a long season man and and i think there's a lot of value there for kirk um and then the other one that also i think that people are, are down on and and i'm i'm higher on is hollywood you know hollywood brown um in in arizona arizona just looks like an absolute train wreck right now but yeah, but can't help but watch, and and they're hey, score points, dude. Like, and Colt was peppering him. Colt was peppering yeah. him in 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 the preseason, yeah. and that's you know Colt you gotta got like cut, seeing that. Unfortunately, today, so that's oh that's, nice. That was a shocker, a little bit of a shocker to me. So it looks like they're in the tank for uh, tank for Kellen, um, uh, tank tank for twenty twenty four. I mean, I don't know if that's what they're gonna do or not, but but it, um, but but I still think. I mean, Hollywood is. Well, Hopkins is gone. You look at the weapons there, you know, between Hollywood Brown and James Conner. I mean, Arizona is still going to score some points, man. So I think there's there's points to be had there for cheap. Um, and so, yeah, Christian Kirk, Jahan Dotson and Hollywood Brown. Those are three of uh, uh, we'll say lowercase my guys that I wanted to bring up. <laughs> my acquaintances. Yeah, no, my, no, 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 they're your guys. You're my, right. My, You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Definitely a good call there with Marquise. He's been a show favorite. Uh, along the same lines, Kyler Murray has been a show favorite, uh, especially like Casey and just having such a discount that you can get on yeah. Kyler Murray. It's pretty wild. Even in our ADP, he's 208. You know, that's – that's mm-hmm. I, when you're in a startup, I don't – I like having two good quarterbacks, but I know that I should not force it. I will not leave the first two rounds without at least one. I'll make it right. happen. There'll be somebody I can get. It'll be. It would have to be a very specific scenario where I can't at least get one guy. Um, but usually you can get two with either Dak or Kyler coming back around towards the end of that second. And if those guys linger, I'm gobbling that shit up. And then I've seen them linger to the third round. So. Yeah. And, and every draft's different. You never know what kind of room you're going to be in and what kind of runs are going to go off with the quarterback. Might be 12 straight quarterbacks go off the board, you know, and then maybe you need to pivot a little bit. Um, right. But if not, you know, maybe maybe they don't value the quarterback enough and then you need to take a couple extra because they're going to be wanting them and there's huge trades, you know, to be made. And, and the bottom line is that Kyler Murray's coming back and he's going to play and he's going to score points. So... Yeah. Um, I, I don't love the guy. It doesn't feel great, but it makes sense from, you know, 
a mental aspect and, and from a this guy can score fantasy points. So wanted to squeeze Kyler in there. Some a couple of more guys that I'm taking super late, not super late, but like when I get into the teens of the rounds, I'm looking at Rondale Moore. I want to get him on my team. I like Wandale Robinson too. Uh, Romeo Dubs is someone I find myself always drafting. Uh, Cortland Sutton, a little more expensive, but still pretty cheap. No. If I can't get Judy, I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm down. I'll, I'll take some Cortland Sutton. I mean, Judy's already hurt, and and yeah. um, he should be fine. But I, I I just I guess I'm gonna I haven't been able to quit Cortland this whole time, and then Sean Payton's here. Let's do it one more time. Let's and it's 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 cheap, man. It's it's right. It's like so it cheap. cheap. Yeah. What even is he? I mean, let's see. Let's find him. Twelve four. You know. I mean, look at these guys around him. You know, you want to take one of these tight ends. I get it. If you missed on tight end, you want to take Greg or Chig or Komet or McBride. You want to take Tajay Spears. Yeah, I'm fine. You want to take, uh, you know, Rashi or Cortland. I guess you should probably take Rashi. I have this 2-1 pick. I probably wouldn't trade it for Cortland Sutton, not on this team that, that I'm trying to rebuild on. But I, I think, yeah. Cortland, I've probably elevated this, this ADP a little bit. And um, no, I mean, I know I know Matt likes him as well. I I, I know that he's 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 high out there. I uh, um, you know, with with the wide receiver, we I was just talking about Mooney and and them having needing some wide receiver help there. I mean, I think Sutton is, I don't want to say last man standing. They still have they still have talent there, but he's you know he, he's he's still um he's still upright. So I think he's going to definitely have some some points and I think it would be a good good move right now to go out and try to try to see what the feelers are on him um if you have them like I do I've had him I have him in a couple spots I've tried to tried to move off of him um got to hold that beautiful duty. butterfly for a little yeah. bit longer we got to see it hit the field we got to get a splash play if you want to move him exactly. you got to wait yep and I'm exactly. fine with that you want to do that that's fine I'm yeah. not where I where I paid for him in a couple of leagues I probably should move him when that happens but, but where you pay for him now it's like fuck that's what you just paid them you know you just yep. paid a little and got a lot basically is what we're kind of saying here so it's not it's not sexy it's not popular he's never going to be a top five startup round pick you know uh ever again but you need no. some guys like him on your team that can yep. help you win championships you need some depth you need to, to make it to these dark times speaking of that my last guy that i wrote down damian harris if you if you if you shy away from running back I've been taking Damian Harris late in these drafts. Uh, I've been trying to trying to target him, get at him. Let's see where he is in the ADP. 13-7. He probably keeps dropping a little bit as Cook goes up. And I'm fine taking Cook, too. You want to take Cook? I got no issues with that. Uh, doesn't seem like a lot of fun having a Buffalo running back. And, and I'm, I don't want to reach on Cook. So if he falls to me, I can't help it. But I'm right. not reaching. But then I'm, I'm going to take Damian Harris because... I think he's going to have some value, and, and I'm usually it's because I needed a running back because I shied away from it early, and it's just good depth to have, um, good depth to have. So you need depth. I mean, honestly, you know? all, all those all those running backs right there on that what you were just showing that mm-hmm. ADP. I mean, all, all of them are are decent swings. I think late, um, maybe not so much on the Chase Brown. I, I haven't kept up with him, but I can tell you, Algier. I know that Bijan's there, but I still think he has he has some some. <clears throat> He's got some floor there. Um, P. Ryan, uh, Javante is coming back supposedly earlier, but he's he's definitely uh, uh, in in Sean Payton's. Um, you know, <laughs> he's in the car with him, right? He's carpooling with him, so I, I'm I'm pretty sure. And, and Elijah Mitchell, I I all those guys right there, I yeah, they're all great stabs. Um, and, and you know, right now you're getting him in the 14th, so that's what equivalent of like a third, fourth round pick um, if you're if you're trading for him on an established team. Um, you know, especially once the ball hikes and and teams start to lose a little bit, I think you can get you can you can pry some of these pieces uh, loose for for probably a little bit cheaper than you can right this moment. But you know, um, but I, I don't think they're going to cost you too much. So, all right, man. Well, you got anything else, dude? I think we did it, man. I, I we made it. Um, it's longer than I thought. My bad. I got to talking about my team and. Thought we'd get out of here in 20 minutes and talking shit about Casey just rambles on and look what I did. Just Yeah, the ghost of Casey got you, I think. A little bit of Big Co in there, too. Uh, yeah, the OG of never shutting the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Big Co. Trying to get him back to do some more uh, 
roster reviews. We've been uh, having some new patrons come in, excited about the roster reviews. You know, we might not do a show about it, but we'll we'll review it uh, through text and and help you talk through some scenarios. Uh, come over to the patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. We got a lot of we're offering a lot of cool things over there. Three extra shows a month. We got ADP. We got some rankings finally. Uh, we're, we're working on expanding those. <clears throat> we'll try to be updating them throughout the year and doing shows on it. Access to the Discord channel. Uh, just just a bunch of fun people helping people. Uh, we're going to be going live probably Thursday nights, maybe Wednesday nights during the season. We'll see. Uh, just Patreon. We're going to be going live every Monday night uh, to the public on page uh throughout the season so make sure you hit that like subscribe button uh so you get the little notey when we come up we're gonna be hit that pretty much every week so uh appreciate y'all for joining us if you can't come over give us the five dollar holler on patreon make sure you hit that like subscribe button make sure you give us a five star review on itunes or spotify be greatly appreciated thanks for hanging with me big d holding it down uh we'll be bringing you all kinds of content for your dynasty fantasy football pleasure let's get the season started baby thank y'all for joining us peace